The unification of Karnataka Kannada, Karnataka Ekakarana refers to the formation of the Indian state of Karnataka, then named Mysore state, in 1956 when several Indian states were created by redrawing borders based on linguistic demographics. Decades earlier, during British rule the first demands for a state based on Kannada demographics had been made. Historical background During the period of British rule, areas that now comprise Karnataka were under as many as 20 different administrative units with the princely state of Mysore, Nizam's Hyderabad, the Bombay Presidency, the Madras Presidency and the territory of Kodagu being the most important ones. In effect, nearly two-thirds of what is now Karnataka fell outside the rule of the Wodyar kings of Mysore. This meant that the Kanadigas in these regions in spite of their large numbers they did not have an administrative patronage. Kanadigas in the Hubli Karnataka region for example, came under the rule of the Bombay Presidency where Marathi was the official language. Those in the Hyderabad Karnataka region came under the Nizam's rule where Urdu was the main language. Kanadigas in South Kanara came under the rule from Madras Presidency which used Tamil as the main language. Under these conditions, a feeling of discontent began among Kanadigas outside Mysore. Thus, while the Kanadigas under the Nizam felt that Urdu was being forced on them at the expense of Kannada, those in the Bombay Presidency felt similarly concerning Marathi. These areas also remained economically undeveloped. It was in these conditions that the movement that first started as a protest against linguistic oppression, began demanding the creation of a separate state consolidating all Kannada-speaking regions. This was called the Ekakarana or Unification movement. Role of North Karnataka Almost the entire southern half of Karnataka was then under the Wodyars of Mysore with Nalvadi Krishnaraja Wodyar. The official language of the state was Kannada and the state was also one of the more progressive states of the day. Important protagonists of the Ekakarana movement including Aluru Venkata Rao were from northern parts of Karnataka. One of the earliest and most important organizations that was chosen to lead the movement, the Karnataka Vidyavardaka Sangha also began in Darwad. The Vidyavardaka Sangha and other organizations The Karnataka Vidyavardaka Sangha, Darwad was established in 1890. It was established by R. H. Deshpande with the objective of working for the resurgence of the Kannada language which had been marginalized under the rule of the Bombay Presidency where Marathi was the official language. The Vidyavardaka Sangha became the aegis under which leaders from all over Karnataka gathered to further their agitation. The influence and success of the Vidyavardaka Sangha soon lead to more such organizations being set up throughout Karnataka. The most notable of these were the Kannada Sahitya Parishat Bangalore that was set up in 1915, the Karnataka Sangha Shivamaga that began in 1916 and the Karnataka Samithi in Kasaragod in 1955. Topic: <laughs> Karnataka Samithi R. Kasaragod Karnataka Samithi R. Kasaragod was established in 1955 to advocate a merger of Kasaragod with Karnataka state. Umesha Rao, popularly known as Gadinadu Gandhi, was the first president of the organization and the only person to be elected to the Kerala Assembly unanimously. On his death in 1957, B. S. Kakalaya succeeded him as president until 1967. A prominent figure in the movement for unification of Karnataka, Kakalaya was later honoured by the government of Karnataka, which gave the Suvarna Karnataka Ekakarana Award to the Samithi on the occasion of Suvarna Karnataka Rayatsava in 2006. His photograph was among those used in the Karnataka government's Suvarna Karnataka calendar of 2006. Kalij Mahabala Bandari, an advocate, was elected to the Kerala Assembly from Manjeshwaram constituency in Kasaragod under the Samithi banner. U. P. Kunakalaya was similarly elected in 1967. The efforts of the Samithi led to the Kaskarad unification issue being referred to the Justice Mahajan Commission by the Government of India in 1966. 
B. V. Kakalaya prepared a case for presentation before the commission, where K. R. Karanth, a former minister under Rajagopalachari in the then state of Madras and a leading advocate, represented the Samithi. The commission upheld the claim for merger of Kasaragod with the state of Karnataka. The Parliament of India is yet to take a final decision in the matter. B. V. Kakalaya took over the presidency of the Samithi in 2000. During his term as president, the government of Kerala nominated him as a member of the state-level committee for linguistic minorities in Kerala. He, too, received the Rayatsava Award in 2006. Aluru <inaudible> Venkata <inaudible> Rao <inaudible> Although resentment and protest had started as early as in 1856 and the Karnataka Vidyavardaka Sangha had been established in 1890, the movement took a dramatic turn with the arrival of Aluru Venkata Rao on the scene. Speaking at a meeting of the Sangha in 1903, Alur Venkata Rao made a case for integrating all Kannada regions of Madras Province and North Karnataka with Mysore Kingdom. Aluru himself was inspired by the protests that followed the British partitioning of Bengal. In 1907 and again in 1908, Rao organized the All Karnataka Writers' Conference in Darwad. Inspired by the Vidyavardaka Sangha and the efforts of Deshpand, Aluru helped found the Kannada Sahitya Parishad in Bangalore in 1915. This Parishad found a patron in the ruler of Mysore. The Parishad began holding annual literary conferences that continue today in different parts of the state. Intellectuals from across the Kannada speaking regions attended these conferences. During the Home Rule movement, Aluru floated the idea of a Karnataka provincial unit of the Indian National Congress. This soon took shape and the Karnataka Pradesh Congress Committee was formed. Karnataka Gatha Vaibhava Amidst all this, Aluru published his most renowned achievement, the Karnataka Gatha Vaibhava in 1912. Karnataka Gatha Vaibhava literally means the glory that was Karnataka. It was a book that recounted in detail the history of Karnataka until the fall of Vijayanagar after which the Marathas, Nizam and the British took over. The book impacted the young and old alike. The movement soon caught the imagination of the public and people started rallying around the Ekakarana movement and the movement picked up momentum. For all these efforts and for being the one who inspired a whole movement, Aluru is today remembered as the Kannada Kula Purohita or the High Priest of the Kannada clan. <laughs> <laughs> Growth of the movement Starting with Aluru's call for a Kannada linguistic state, the movement had slowly started gaining momentum and following. It was also around the time that the Indian independence movement was gathering momentum. Organizations in the movement began organizing rallies, talks and conferences where demands for a separate state for Kannada-speaking people was made. Apart from Aluru, supporters like Gudlepa Halakari, Sadapa Kambli, R. H. Deshpand, Rangarao Diwakar, Kojalji Srinivasarao, Srinivas Rao Mangalvidi, Kengal Hanumanthaya, Gora Ramaswamy Iyengar, S. Nijalingapa, T. Mariapa, Subramanya, Sokar Chennaya, H. K. Viringauta, H. C. Dasapa, H. Siddhaya, K. R. Karanth, B. S. Kakalaya, B. V. Kakalaya and Anakru were by now prominent in the movement. Anakru in particular, was influential with his writing and oratory. Nagpur Conference Due to the efforts of these organizations and leaders, the movement not only gained in momentum but also attained a quasi-political influence. In 1920, Karnataka State Political Conference was held at Darwad. At this conference, which was presided over by V. P. Madhav Rao, a unanimous resolution was passed demanding the unification of all Kannada-speaking areas. The conference also advised Kannadigas to attend the Nagpur Congress to be held later that year in large numbers. Almost 800 delegates attended the Nagpur Conference where the Indian National Congress made the decision to create the Karnataka Pradesh Congress Committee. This aided the movement and leaders of the Congress like S. Nijalingapa and Kengal Hanumanthaya both of whom went on to become chief ministers of Karnataka and Gudlepa Halakari also served as active members of the movement. <laughs> Nagpur 
1924 Belagavi Conference In 1924, the Belagavi Congress was held under the aegis of the newly formed Karnataka Pradesh Congress Committee arm of the INC. Mahatma Gandhi presided over this historic conference. This conference was attended by Kanadigas from all parts in large numbers. The first Karnataka Unification Conference was also organized at the same venue. This was presided over by Sadapa Kambli. These two conferences were attended by a significant number of leaders, writers, poets and intellectuals from Karnataka. It was here that Hulgal Narayana Rao first sang his Udayavagali Nama Chelava Kannada Nadu, which meant Let Our Charming Kannada Land Don. The INC lent formal support to the cause, this was the first time the movement had explicit political support. As a result of these conferences, the Karnataka Ekakarana Sabha which was to work in collaboration with the KPCC began with the objective of the unification of Karnataka. The Karnataka Ekakarana Sabha later came to be known as the Karnataka Ekakarana Sangha. <laughs> Nehru Committee Recommendation In 1928, due to the efforts of Gudleppa Halakari, the formation of a single province by uniting all Kannada-speaking areas was recommended by the Nehru Committee. It was stated by the committee that there was a strong prima facie case for unification. It also went on to state that it believed Karnataka could also be a financially strong province. This recommendation aided the movement. There was later support from literary figures like Kuvampu, Bendra, Gokak, S. B. Joshi, Betgari Krishna Sharma, M. Govinda Pai, Shivarama Karanth and Kayara Kiana Rai. There was also widespread support growing from the newspapers and media. Several smaller public and college organizations also began, notably in Bengaluru, Shivamaga and Raichur. Topic. 1937 elections Following the Simon Commission, elections were held in 1937. The Congress said it would favor the formation of the separate Karnataka and Andhra states. This was met with some resistance from the British and also some of the princely states. While the princely states feared that they might stand to lose some territory, the British themselves were unsure of how they would handle the reorganization. Sadapa Kambli sensing the reluctance, decided that the movement had to approach the Simon Commission with their case. But the other leaders of the movement like Gangadhar Deshpand, Rangarao Diwakar, Kojalji Srinivasarao and Aluru advised him not to do so as they had boycotted the commission. Gudlapa Halakari invited the Maharaja of Mysore to tour the Kannada-speaking provinces of Bombay and Hyderabad. After the tour and several discussions the movement gained his active support. Topic: 1946 Conference. The tenth conference of the Ekakarana movement was held on the 10th of January 1946 in Mumbai. This conference was inaugurated by Sardar Patel and attended by the likes of B. G. Kerr, the then Chief Minister of Bombay Presidency. In his speech at the conference, Sardar Patel stated that the interests of all linguistic groups would be high on the list of priorities for the new government of independent India. This served to reduce the apprehensions of the movement leaders and the common people. This was also to have a bearing on the constituent assembly that met in the same year. In the same year, the All Karnataka Convention, a gathering of Kanadigas was held in Devanagir, in central Karnataka. This was presided over by Mr. M. P. Padal, the revenue minister of Mumbai. This convention attracted tens of thousands of Kanadigas from Karnataka. Leaders like Gudlapa Halakari, Kengal Hanumanthaya, T. Mariapa, Subramanya, Sokar Chenaya, H. K. Viringauda, H. C. Dasapa and H. Siddhaya attended this convention and urged the Constituent Assembly to create the linguistic states. <laughs> Post-independence India soon gained independence in 1947. The new government soon began delaying concerning the Karnataka Ekakarana movement. Kannada-speaking areas were now grouped under five administrative units of the Bombay and Madras provinces, Kodagu, and the princely states of Mysore and Hyderabad. The Akila Karnataka Ekakarana Parishat met in Kasargad and reiterated the demand for a separate state for Kanadigas. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Opposition by Mysore state. Ironically, the state of Mysore and several politicians opposed unification of Karnataka, on the pretext that Mysore state has fertile lands, more developed and present North Karnataka was not developed with large area of dry land. <laughs> Liberation of Hyderabad Karnataka While Karnataka became independent with the rest of the country on 15 August 1947, this did not occur in some parts of the state that were under the rule of the Nizam of Hyderabad. Hyderabad consisted of large portions of what were later to be the north-eastern districts of Bidar, Gulbarga and Raichur of Karnataka state. The Lingayat minority in these regions also largely believed that they had been neglected and resented the oppression of the Nizam and the Razakars. The Nizam refused to accede to India until his rule was overthrown by force. Following the police action against the Nizam, Hyderabad province and its citizens became independent on 17 September 1948. This day is celebrated by the Karnataka government as the Hyderabad Karnataka Liberation Day. The Dar and JVP Committee In the same year, the government appointed the Dar Commission to look into the demands of the Ekakarana movement as well as those of the other parallel movements in the other states. The Dar Commission in its report, opposed any reorganization of the states. This was criticized by all quarters including the Jaipur Congress. The government now formed the JVP Committee. This committee had Jawaharlal Nehru, Vallabhbhai Patel and Dr. Patabi Siddharamaya on the board. This committee examined the demands again and created a report. The JVP report, however, favoured only the creation of the Andhra state while the Karnataka Ekakarana movement was deliberately ignored. The Ekakarana movement saw this as a betrayal of the Congress which had declared the creation of linguistic provinces as one of its goals in its 1951 manifesto. The movement now formed the Karnataka Ekakarana Paksha to contest the 1951 polls. This was supported by literary figures as well as politicians like Gudlapa Halakari, Kengal Hanumanteya, S. Nijalangapa, and C. M. Punaka, the chief minister of Kodagu. The Fazl Ali Committee In January 1953, at the Congress session in Hyderabad, a resolution was also passed favoring the creation of Andhra Pradesh but not Karnataka. A. J. Dodmeti, a senior Congress leader and the member of the Bombay Assembly, immediately resigned from his seat and launched a hunger strike at Jakali in Darwad. This was widely supported. In the riots at Hubli that followed, many people were injured and several courted arrest. In the Hubli Darwad by elections that followed, the Congress were defeated while the Karnataka Ekakarana Paksha's candidate won by a landslide. Under pressure, Prime Minister Nehru constituted the State's Reorganization Commission SRC, also known as the Fazl Ali Commission due to being headed by Justice Fazl Ali. At the same time, the Mysore government appointed a fact-finding committee, headed by M. Shashadri. The SRC opposed the unification but its findings were ignored due to overwhelming support in favour from Mysoreans such as Mokshagundam Visvesvaraya. Congress leader Gudlapa Halakari furthered the cause of unification within his party by advocating for states based on linguistic demographics. He also represented and urged unification in front of the SRC. The SRC eventually recommended the reorganization of the states based on linguistic demographics and this was soon ratified in Parliament. Aftermath The ratification in Parliament of the recommendations of the SRC was reacted to positively by Kanadiga people, although there was also disappointment at the non-inclusion of certain parts of Mysore state. Most notable among the excluded areas was Kasargod, which had been one of the centres from which the Ekakarana movement had launched its agitation. This is an issue that continues to affect those who fought for the unification of Karnataka. On 1 November 1973, under Devaraj Ors as chief minister, Mysore state was renamed as Karnataka, which was considered to be a more inclusive name than Mysore. Ekakarana Awards 
To mark the celebrations of the 50th year of Karnataka's unification, the state government headed by the then Chief Minister H. D. Kumarswamy awarded 36 individuals and four organizations with the Ekakarana Award for the service they had rendered for uniting Karnataka. The Karnataka Vidyavardaka Sangha, Darwad and the Kannada Sahitya Parishat, Bengaluru that Aluru once assisted and headed and Karnataka Samithi R. Kasaragod were included among the recipients. See also Mysore Disambiguation History of Hyderabad Karnataka History Timeline equals equals notes <laughs>